What is going on, ARMY? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is the final day of the month, which means that we are going to be reviewing the album of the month, that being The Most Beautiful Moment in Life Part 1. Every single song is going to be touched upon. I'm going to give my thoughts on the entire album. And uh, spoiler alert, I liked it quite a bit. Some of the best songs of BTS's entire discography are on this album. And I do want to also touch upon what I think the theme of the album is. This is part one, so we are we do have a part two coming soon. Uh, yes, but let's start with the first song on the album, that being the intro. Intro. So all BTS albums generally have an intro song that is the title song, and it usually conveys to us what the theme is for the album. So the album title is The Most Beautiful Moment in Life. And this is the beginning of a new era for BTS. This is the new um, phase, you could say, in the most beautiful moment in life era. Uh, the previous song, Dark and Wild, as well as the school trilogy with School of Affair, Too Cool for School, and Oh Are You Late 2, that's over with. We have a more matured BTS, but the general gist of the school era was to talk about problems that people in their 10s and 20s were going through. But now we're sort of reaching the point where these are problems that people in their uh, late 10s and early 20s are definitely going through. And they talk about that um, a little bit in the actual uh, song for the intro. And it's all sugar this time which kind of caught me off guard for a second, but I do remember that it's not completely uncommon that we have a intro song that only has one member on it. Dark and Wild had RM on it. This one has Suga. Now, Suga is a big fan of basketball. Suga's name comes, uh, it's debated, but there is one theory, uh, and I think that's the one that they're really putting forward, where Suga's name comes from Shooting Guard, and the entire song sort of is themed around him uh, playing basketball. And he's outside of the school, and he's contemplating his life. And uh, I'll read a little bit of the lyrics because it's kind of important. What am I doing with my life? One hell of a concept, one hell of a notion. And this moment will never come back. I ask myself again, are you happy? The answer is already set. I'm happy. I think what they're trying to do here is, you know, <laughs> and I can relate to this uh, to a degree, when you're young, the world is massive and confusing and you sort of don't really know what's going on and you hope that you have some guidance in order to help you go through life, right? I think that a lot of us, including myself, don't really still know what's going on. <laughs> and we don't really have a set, clear path, and obviously the world is a complex place and things get thrown at us, so our ideas change. But I think the general gist that most people have when it comes to what they're doing with their lives and their goals is to be happy. And that is sort of the theme that was present throughout the entire school era and the previous albums that BTS has released. This is a 20s, late 10s, early 20s problem. The confusion, what's happening, what's going on, all the problems that we're going through. But there's one thing that's persistent uh, and that we all strive for, and that's happiness. And that is the most beautiful moment in life being happy, when you are happy. And in this song, it's sort of conveyed when Suga gets in the zone of playing basketball, and then when he's out of the zone, life kind of hits him again. But then when he's back in the zone, he's happy. And it's not always that him playing basketball is the only thing that's going to make him happy, but it's that notion of when you are happy with whatever you're doing, that is the most beautiful moment in life. That's sort of what I'm taking away from it. And we're all striving for it. And there is something to be said that you need to go through some difficult moments in your life because if you're not going through the downs, you're not going to go through the ups in life. And as much as we don't want sadness and, and, and bad things to happen to us, and we obviously you know, want to not have ever have the really bad stuff, having the downs makes you appreciate the ups and lets you be more thankful and happy 
for those moments. Uh, it, there's another notion that nothing really good comes to you if you don't really have to work hard for it. Um, and when you have that moment of that thing that you've worked so hard for finally be given to you, it's you feel over the moon in, in, in regards to happiness. Again in the song, he talks about screaming at the world, I'll be fine. In spite of my bad grades, I'll be fine. In spite of the things that are being thrown at us, we'll be fine. In spite of the difficulties that we go through, we'll be fine. Not everything is perfect. Not everything will work out. Um, but as long as we're happy, and happiness is different for different people, you know? Obviously, BTS... Uh, probably feels extremely comfortable when they're with each other and they're working on their music because music is their passion and hip-hop is their passion. So if they were working on something else, they probably wouldn't be happy. But so long as they're working on music and working on hip-hop and, and, and you know, growing as an individual, they're happy. That's not what would make necessarily you happy. You, maybe you don't have an interest in making music, but you have an interest in something else. As long as you're pursuing that goal and keeping that dream that they've always talked about in the previous albums alive, that is how you will be happy. Happiness is not the same for everyone. Uh, thank God it isn't because um, then life would kind of be boring because, um, you know, having discovering new things and finding new interests like discovering BTS and going through their discography for me is what's making me happy right now. It's, it's, this message is crazy. Um, and it's well conveyed in this short little time frame, in this melody, in this song. It's crazy. Um, one hell of an intro. And I look at it, I look at it less as a song and more as, the beginning of this project. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's it's powerful. Yeah. Everything. 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 I need you. So this is the title track of the album, and it is also the beginning of the BU timeline. If you're not familiar with the BU timeline, it's just basically the Bang Ten universe. The closest thing I could explain it to or connect it to is sort of like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's sort of in in the sense of BTS interconnected music videos. It's not inherently connected to the song, but a lot of the song does make sense in the uh, in the music video. But you shouldn't really be taking those two together inherently. Um, and I'm not really going to factor in the BU timeline in regards to my album reviews. I'm sort of just going to take them for what they are. But it is something to keep in the back of our heads that this song uh, and the music video for it are a part of the BU timeline. That's, a, like I said, a completely separate video. <laughs> Very complex stuff. <laughs> it really it is. Uh, but this song, in my opinion, is one of my favorite BTS songs of all time. And I know that I haven't gotten through a lot of uh, BTS's songs because there's so many songs, but I really can't imagine... Um, this not being at the minimum, minimum top 10 BTS songs, probably top five BTS songs. And I do think it's my favorite song in the entire album, uh, really rivaling another song that we'll talk about soon, that the follow-up song. This song, um, lyrically, is crazy good. It's talking about an issue that people in their late 10s and 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s all go through and in different ways. So the song is I Need You, and in the song, the lyrics, they go, I need you, girl, right? ARMY has informed me that it's not necessarily girl in the sense of like a relationship, like girlfriend. Uh, and its original lyric was supposed to be I need you, friend. We've talked about this many times, um, and, I, and I, you know, I say it all the time. I need you, girl sounds better than I Need You Friend uh, in the song. It, it, it just does. Uh, <laughs> but it could be interpreted that way of I Need You Girl, as in my, my partner. Or it could be interpreted in the sense of I Need You Friend, as in friend. Um, uh, not just in the sense like a romantic relationship. 
uh, could be a family member, could be your brother, could be your sister. It could be taken either way. And the whole gist of the song is the difficulty that you're having with that person, where you love them so much, which is why I kind of get the, the gist of it being like friend, as in like super close friend in, in, in that regard. But also, relationship. You want to be there for them, but they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing, and you're trying to help them get through it, And but you're like, I hate you, I can't believe you're doing this. But then you're like, I love you, so I'm sorry, and please let me help you, and and but you got to get away from me, but I want to be, I want you to be with me, but I want you, it's, it's this push and pull thing that we've all, well, I wouldn't say we all have, but I think we can all relate to, to some degree. And this is definitely an older person's issue. This isn't something you, that you usually see, um, hopefully in people in their tens of their lower tens. Like you don't usually see this in like a 13, 14 year old. You usually see this when they get a little bit older and life starts really just getting thrown in their face and you're like, I really want to help you <laughs> and I, I, I need you in my life, but this relationship is really hurting me and I, and I can't get out of it because I don't want to, I, I don't want to get out of it, but it's toxic, but I, I want to try to help you. It's this whole thing. It's this whole thing. It's a crazy um, and in regards to the BU timeline, I'll just hint a, 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 about it a little bit. In the BU timeline, it's not, it's, it's, it's like your brother is going through such a difficult time and they're really hurting for something that, that they've gone through that's completely not their fault, but they've gone through it and something drastic has happened and terrible has happened and you want to be there for them and you have no, you really don't know how to help them. That's, that's sort of the gist of it in the BU timeline. It's just too good. It's it's lyrically it's phenomenal, um, and as a, as as just as a whole as a song, it's crazy. It's it's one of those songs that just hits you. It sounds so good and yet it's so sad and yet it's so relatable. Yeah, it's just it's it's my favorite song in the album. It's got to be um, for the for for really like some of the most painful reasons possible uh, yeah yeah hold me tight mm, what a song so the first time I listened to the song and when I first heard the title I had an idea of what this song was going to be okay and if you've watched any of my album reviews deep dives into songs you know I'm not much of a love song kind of a person just got to put that out there, just in case you don't know that, you do know that, right? Love songs aren't inherently my thing. But I'm not cold-hearted or anything like that, so love songs do grow on me. Uh, and I do like some love songs, more of the fun songs than the lovey-dovey ones. But something like Just One Day, which is clearly the most lovey-dovey love song BTS has ever done, has grown on me. I'm not cold-hearted, okay? <laughs> they do grow on me, and I was fully expecting this one to grow on me. However, however, I have to say something that kind of hit me when I was looking at this song over and over again. There's a reason why it's right after I Need You. I looked at the lyrics. I was really looking for something that was really showing me that this is a love song of a romantic relationship. I was looking for something. There's nothing inherently in the lyrics that could be, there might be and I missed it, I'll, okay, there might be and I missed it, and this could be weird, but there's nothing inherently expressing something of, of a relationship of the romantic sort where it's clearly my girlfriend, my boyfriend, or something like that. The fact that it's right after I Need You where the lyric is, again, I need you girl, but is more meant for I need you friend. And we know, you know, the sort of taking hints of the BU timeline. This song, Hold Me Tightly, is not inherently a romantic relationship love song. It could be, again, right after I need you, a relationship song of your brother or someone that you hold so dearly, not in a romantic sense. You can you hug your brother, of course. Why wouldn't you? You know, you're gonna give them a bear hug. 
because there's a deep connection between you and your brother, your sister, your sibling, wh whoever it may be. I was looking at this song all wrong. I... Damn. <laughs> Damn. It never once occurred to me to look at the song not as a romantic relationship. Um, and while it's still, you know, was I going at it in a negative context because it was that I was looking at it as a lovey-dovey song? Okay. Blame me. Sure. But am I wrong in thinking that? I don't know. I mean, I've looked at the lyrics a couple of times, but there's nothing strictly romantic. And the line, like the the line that I pointed out in the deep dive. Look, I'm fair. I, uh, look, I'm fair and impartial to everyone but you. Who do we do that to? Also, outside of a romantic relationship, our family. We're we're more easy to be. We're more often to be rude to them than to strangers because we're so comfortable with them. Ah. <sighs> Hold me tight. Hug me. Can you trust me? There's nothing. There's nothing. Okay. The, the You still you still feel like a fragrant flower. You know. Is it leaning towards a romantic relationship? Absolutely. Same thing with I Need You. But could this be interpreted as a as a another relationship? Yeah. Bravo, BTS. I swear to God. I didn't look at it like that. And... I'm like, huh, this does have romantic leanings, as usual songs do, but not inherently. Wow. <laughs> wow. Skit, expectation. So when it comes to skits, don't really look at them too, too deeply, but I, I, I do sometimes look at skits to double check that there isn't something too like really important there because in the very first album the hidden track uh there was a skit that kind of blew me away uh really uh but this skit is more so talking about expectations and we'll talk about them generally speaking uh and a little bit about bts it was really just talking this this skit was really just talking about the expectations they had with a focus on the title tracks so no more dream uh boy in love and oh, you know, uh, danger and something like that and their expectations and what they were hoping they could get from them and everything like that. And they sort of kind of talked about taxes at the end of it, <laughs> which shows us that they're growing up. <laughs> not, not so much that they're looking at taxes, but more so they're growing up in the sense that they have to file them. Uh, there's one thing that you're, there's actually two things certain in life, uh, death and taxes. Um, so I'm sure all my uh, younger Younger viewers out there, are like, what is he talking about? My older viewers are like, mm hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but you know, they're sort of just talking about what they were hoping with with uh, their songs, and I, I'm kind of aware that NOs didn't have maybe the biggest response ever, uh, in regards to their ones, and they were kind of surprised as to how popular No More Dream was and stuff like that. I, I think that their I think that their title tracks, when, and we're talking about their primary title tracks, so the No More Dream, the N.O., the Boy in Love, and the Danger, um, I think they've actually gotten better at making the title tracks as every album's go gone forward. Uh, and I think it continues to this day, because if we're comparing them, No More Dream to N.O., um, I think they're kind of tied, in my opinion, when it comes to title tracks. And then you have Boy in Love, which is amazing. I love that song. Uh, and then you have Danger, which I think, uh, it's kind of tricky. Uh, is it better than Boy in Love? Maybe. Is Boy in Love and Danger better than their first two title tracks? I think so. I Need You, best one so far when it comes to their primary title tracks. Yes, I do think that that's a fair uh, statement. But they're, they're kind of talking about a, you know, um, don't have any expectations. And it's that notion of don't expect anything other, and then you won't be disappointed. Which is kind of unfortunate. Because it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a sad thing, and I, I live by that model too, to be honest with you. And oftentimes, the videos that I put out, this is really weird, videos I put out in the past that I expect to perform better don't, <laughs> and the ones that I think are just dumb do better. <laughs> I'm not gonna say which ones, but it's everyone's gone through this. You have an expectation, and then it fails. And then you don't have an expectation, and it sort of like blows up. It's like, well, what? 
Um, yeah. Um, do I want to say don't have expectations and you'll never be disappointed? No, because I do want you, I do want me and you to look forward to things. I would just say the best thing to take away from expectations is have expectations of yourself and not other people. And then you won't be disappointed because if you're expecting things from other people, you'll probably be disappointed. But if you expect things from yourself, you have goals. Uh, expectations might not be the best word. Goals are better. Have goals instead of expectations for yourself and try to meet them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So much deep thought from a skit. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. Hey, yo, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Dope. Dope is the follow-up track for this album. It is the second biggest song on the album. And it is my... Uh, here we go. <laughs> it is my... It is my favorite song by BTS so far when it comes to fun. It is the most fun song by BTS so far in all of their albums, including the rest of the songs on this album. I think Dope is the most fun, with I believe the next track being the second most fun I've gotten from one, from a song. There's a lot of contenders for the most fun tracks. You have the Satori Rap, which really high, really high up there. You have Attack on Bangtan, really high up there for fun. Dope, so far, in my opinion, is the most fun one. Uh, and the music video just brings it to that next level of fun as well. Uh, there's not too much to say in regards to this song. They do touch upon something that I'll talk about, but overall, it's just meant to be a fun song. And I Need You is my favorite BTS song so far. Of all the songs, this is my favorite fun song so far because i need you's not that fun <laughs> you know what i'm saying i need you's not that fun it's the best song but it's not the most fun one this one definitely is they do touch upon um the notion of the older generation talking about the younger generation saying hey too bad you know work hard and then you'll then you'll make it through and then they're sort of being like hey you know there's no fair jobs anymore. You know, you do a job and you get paid less than the, than the previous generation. You can't buy any houses anymore. And I do know that the comments were sort of talking about how that's going to be a theme going forward. Because, hey, guess what? That is a problem that people go through in their 20s. I like this continuation. From the very beginning, they talk about 10s and 20s. But they're growing as people, right? They're growing uh, themselves and we're not even talking in the sense of like, okay, they're growing as individuals, they're growing as artists. They're actually just getting older. <laughs> Duh. They're actually just getting older. So as more of them age out of the 10s and go into the 20s, they can start seeing the problems that the people in their 20s are going through. Because that topic is going to be brought up again later on, I'm going to talk about it a lot, but I like them bringing it up now, and this is the beginning of the 20s issue. I have I have a feeling that going forward, we're going to see more 20s problems arise and less 10s, because school is over. You're in college, you're in university, and you've graduated. Something along those lines. I'm sure we're going to get to that. But, yeah, this is a good song. Um, and, you know, I kind of got a little bit roasted because I said, oh, it's the song from... Run BTS, it is, okay? I know that the song... I'm not I'm not saying the song is good because of Run BTS. It's just that it's also the... For a very long time, it was the theme song to Run BTS. But overall, favorite fun song so far. Absolutely. Um, probably second best song behind I Need You by BTS so far as well. But for some more fun... Let's talk about the next track. Boys with fun. So, kind of picking up on a pattern here. We've had boy in love. We're going to have boy with love. We currently have boys with fun. So, I'm assuming that we're going to be getting a song called Boys in Fun. Um... Can't wait for that one. Um, jokes aside, this song is really just kind of 
meant to be another fun kind of song. And it's, it is definitely a fun song. It's I, there. I, I will talk about the theme and I kind of like it that they touch upon it. But like I said, it's just along those lines of like the previous song, Dope, like Satori Rap, like Attack on Bangtan. And there's like a play on words over here where they kind of have their uh, name in the song a little bit. Uh, but that's really the gist of the song. Just they're having fun. They're, they're, they're fooling around. And, and I think the, the thing you could take away from this song, and it's kind of how I, I we're going to talk a little bit about me a little bit in regards to this song. <laughs> so sorry about that. But the notion of, they talk, they said there's a lyric in there, like your pretenses are gone. Just have some fun, just relax, just loosen up and everything like that. And I think that's an important thing to have. And I try to bring that a little bit in something like my streams and uh, a little bit sometimes you see it in my videos where I'm kind of less so focusing on the song and more so just trying to have fun with the song. Um, uh, and it, less of a deep dive and more of just like a, oh, okay, let's uh, re-listen to the song. I love this song, so let's just have a good time with it, right? I try to stop caring about what other people could possibly think, you know, like, oh, it's cringy or something. And I said this in the deep dive. There is cringe. There certainly is cringe. And sometimes... Cringe is funny. Now, cringe can be cringe, obviously. But I don't really view too many things as cringy as maybe other people might. There's fun to be had with a certain level of cringe. And, like, sometimes when I'm streaming, I, I do things that are a little cringy because I know it'd be like, I think it's hilarious, <laughs> right? But other people will think it's cringy. But who cares? I'm having fun. There's no harm being done. Who really cares? Just have fun. That's the notion of getting rid of your pretenses. I know sometimes people need to loosen up and, you know, stuff like that. But just have fun. Who cares? If you're not hurting anyone, you're being a little goofy, and you're being a little silly, and you're being a little dumb. And hey, it doesn't really take that much for me to make a mistake and look dumb. I'll be perfectly honest. There was something that happened recently that I, I, I misspoke and somebody's name got said wrong and it was just a big disaster. <laughs> And I was embarrassed. Then, oh, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? People were having a, f a fun time. They were laughing. I was kind of laughing a little bit, too. I was kind of like, oh, God, I, I really messed up. <laughs> but who cares? Relax. Have fun. Boys with fun. That's the whole gist of the song. Who cares? Cringe. Join the cringe. Be cringe. Not, not cringe cringe. You never go cringe cringe. But be a little cringe. It's a little fun. Relax. Who cares? Boys with fun. That's the point of the song, right? Yes, yes. All right, on to the next one. Yeah. What's up? Converse High. So, this is an interesting song. Uh, wasn't expecting what I got. Uh, not necessarily complaining. Uh, but it was way more silly and unserious than I was expecting. Although, it's Converse High. I don't really know. You know, we do have, like, name brands being talked about. Something with Spinebreaker and stuff like that, right? Uh, but this isn't that kind of a song. Not a social commentary song. It's just talking about... <laughs> okay. It's just talking about how good <laughs> Converse highs... Not lows. I got nothing against lows. But not lows. How Converse highs look good on girls. Feet. And jeans. And a white t-shirt. Okay. I mean, is, it a, is that a false statement? No. Do Converse highs look good on girls? Sure. With jeans and white t-shirt? Yeah, sure. Do, do Converse high... Well, I, I read a comment that RM prefers them on girls, but you know what? Converse highs on guys with jeans and a white t-shirt? Chef's kiss. That's all I gotta say. Who can't... This song is so unserious, I was shocked by it, okay? They're talking bad about Converse lows. Huh? What's wrong with the Converse low? Don't you want to see the ankles? This is supposed to be a review. Don't you want to see the ankles? Then they talk about Jordans. I got Jordans too. And and Sugar wants to take them off. Whoa. Okay. It's a silly song. And I will treat it as such. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> That's actually kind of like a good way to move on from the previous song. Moving on. How do you go from Converse High to this one? Anyway, um, as much Converse High was unserious, this is a bit more serious. 
and it is, <clears throat> um, it is a it 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 invokes the second grade feel from the previous album. It invokes the hidden track of of, of path from the first album. Moving on is a very serious song. It's talking about moving on in regards to moving to a physical new location because you're getting bigger, you're growing, they're growing, they're getting bigger, they're getting more popular, they're getting older, they have more, um, obviously they have more success, they have more money so they can afford a bigger place than that cramped little apartment, but it's not just moving in the sense of a physical location, it's the memories. It's all about that. It's about what you've experienced as your first year as um, idols. About the memories that you made with the people that you love. Your brothers. Okay? About how it's bittersweet, this location. You've had fights here. You've had great times here. You've had great news here. You've had bad news here. It's all those things. And the difficulties of wanting to move forward and becoming bigger and better and a better person and grow. But also being like, I, I'm going to miss this place. Um, and as much as home is where the heart is and all that cliche stuff, and as long as you got your family, I don't got friends, I got family, stuff like that, right? That, as cliche as it is, hey, it's true. It really is. You know, I, I would imagine that they didn't want, they, they wanted to move because it's better, there's more space, you know. But it's not easy, you know. It's bittersweet. Um, and I really appreciate that song, and it's another one of those songs that we can all relate to, and it's, yet again, another one of those 10s and 20 songs, more so, uh, this could be related, it depends, because we just got, we just got done talking and dope how people really can't afford to move anywhere, but it's a 20s issue, right, it's a, it's, it's later in your life, because if you're moving when you're younger, you're generally moving because of your parents, right, you're not moving because you're moving, you're moving because your parents are moving, but there is that notion of you get a little bit older, and you, you leave the nest, and it's a painful thing, I mean, generally speaking, it's a painful thing, sometimes it's just the greatest thing in the world, <laughs> let's be honest, sometimes it's just the greatest thing in the world, but, if you had a pretty good life and you know, you've been blessed and fortunate enough to have a good life and you're moving on, you're moving out, you're moving forward, um, you know, it's going to definitely be one of those like bittersweet moments where it's like, OK, I'm making it. Um, but, hey, I made it here, you know, the memories. Uh, and that's this. OK, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I Need You is my favorite song on the album. And by BTS, period. Um, Dope is my most fun song and second favorite song on the album. Moving On is my third favorite one. Uh, this is a B-side song, so it's my favorite B-side of the, of the album. Definitely. Definitely. Um, but yet again, it's a bittersweet song. Uh, and we can all relate to it in that degree. Uh, and if you haven't, if you haven't had to move, um, I would recommend listening to the song when you're getting ready to move. Uh, if you're younger and you haven't moved out or anything like that, you'll get it when you're older. <laughs> you'll get it when you're older. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a part of life. Uh, it's it's really just a part of life. And uh, for them, it's work related. For us, it may be work related. For them, it might be you know uh, another reason. For us, it's another reason. It's it's all the same thing. The memories, the location, the better sweetness. Yeah. Outro, love is not over. Now, when I was listening to this song, I was thinking to myself, I've heard this. I know this song. I know the melody. And I was like, oh. It's part of the Bang Tan universe. I remember that. It was part of the Bang Tan universe. It is actually a part of the longer version of I Need You. Uh, it's just the longer version gives more context to the Bang Tan universe, but it starts off with this melody from the outro, and then it jumps into I Need You. And I was like, ah, gotcha. But it does not have really the full song in this longer version of I Need You. I do like... And I and I, I believe we're going to be getting more of this. I like when they showcase specific lines or specific members in the albums 
and more often than not, the vocal line gets to really shine when it comes to the outro of, of the albums. And this is one of those songs. And it's, it's a hopeful ending to this album, but it very much feels like a continuation of I Need You and Hold Me Tight. It feels like it's a continuation off of that little thread that's going on in this album. Very beautiful song. Very nice song. Um, it's a full-fledged song. It's not just like one-minute outro. It's a full-fledged ballad. Um, and the vocals, heavenly. <laughs> heavenly. And they still kind of continue along those lines of... It's, it's, it's still a sad song, uh, you know, of missing someone, or something like that. But the title does give me hope that love is not over. It's a beautiful notion. And yet again, not inherently, but very much leaning towards, but not inherently, romantic relationship. Could be something a little more deeper, something explored in the BU timeline, something along the lines of brotherhood, and stuff like that. Um, very beautiful song, uh, and a good closing to it. Um, hopeful. Uh, and we could all use a little more reassurance that love is not over. Not just relationships, but family, friendship, and really the world. <laughs> and really just the world collectively. Love is not over. Yeah. I think that's a, a, a good outro. Um, yeah. So my overall thoughts on the album. Uh, best one to date, as per usual. I am going to see, I am curious if there's going to be a moment where I say that, um, uh, you know, it's not the best one to date. Uh, I will say, this is consider. I think this is considered a mini album. I believe there were more songs on uh, School Love Affair. I think this is considered a, a mini album. But um, despite its miniature nature, uh, the two songs that really stand out to me, for different reasons but uh, excel in their own individual ways is I Need You, clearly, the best song so far by BTS, and Dope, the most fun song by BTS. And I say this every album, and I'll say it again. BTS, when they first came out, said these songs are for people in their 10s and 20s, okay? And as we've gotten through more and more albums... I see them talking about problems for people in their 10s and 20s. But I see them talking about people in their 10s and 20s getting older. Too Cool for School is very much, um, at the very minimum, uh, a high school song. But I think it's more so middle school, high school. And School Love Affair is really when it becomes that high school, senior year kind of a feel. You know? Because... That's the beginning of relationships, and young people young people generally don't want relationships until they hit that high school era, you know? That's when the war of hormone presents itself, and then people start wanting relationships, so that is sort of it. But with Dark and Wild, and more so even now, with The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, I feel like we're transitioning outside of high school, post-graduation, and most likely in the middle of the final year of high school, going into college, or university, being in that first year of university, where the world really starts presenting itself to you because you're no longer a child, you're an adult. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, both in the pros and the cons. We'll start with the cons because I don't want to end on a negative message in regards to my younger viewers because there's a lot to be, there's a lot of good, and I don't want to startle people or worry them. Okay, <laughs> you'll understand when we talk about it. This album and I believe going forward, based off of the hints that ARMY has told me, is really beginning to discuss the 20s issues. Uh, you know, your puppy love, high school, you know, uh, sweethearts and everything in school love affair is really no longer... It's there because of love, but it's more so now interpersonal relationships, personal responsibilities, am I happy, and things like that. The continuation of that dream that you had when you were younger, now you get to actually fulfill it. Okay, that's sort of what I'm getting here. The most beautiful moment in life is when you're happy. And it's a constant struggle and a fight to remain happy as the world around you is sort of just slapping you in the face. And uh, that notion of I need you and the complications of 
friendships as we get older and the difficulties that people go through. Uh, again, sort of hinted at in the BU timeline with with uh, I'll just say V's family in the B in in the BU timeline. Uh, the fictional timeline. I'm not making any reference to actual personal lives. Uh, but that notion of friends, complicated lives, and everything like that really starts really hitting you a little bit later. And the notion that they talk about, uh, not the notion, the, the concept that they talk about in Dope of work harder, uh, affordable housing, fair pay, and things like that, that they're beginning to hint in a fun song of Dope, but they're hinting towards it. That's not so much what you see in a 10s person. That's more so what you see in a 20s person uh, when you're in the real world with a real job uh, and trying to find a real job and trying to live a life, right, with a house and everything. Uh, and the notion of moving on. Young people may move house to house, but it isn't until you start leaving the nest when you're a little bit later on in life, in your early 20s, if you're lucky, uh, that you get to move on and move on with your life. This is no longer school. This is no longer high school, school of affair. Um, this is no longer young love, dark and wild and stuff like that. This is now adolescence and adulthood looking for the most beautiful moment in life that being happiness and the world just constantly fighting against you. Now, <laughs> that sounds very bleak, and a lot of life is the downs, but the most beautiful moment in life, or moments in life, is the ups and the happiness and the freedom that you have when you're an adult. Now, this is where I wanted to say, a lot of what I just said makes adulthood sound like it's terrible. And my younger viewers may be a little bit nervous. Relax, okay? Let me tell you about the, the good parts of being an adult, okay? That notion of no more dream as a kid, when you're an adult, that's not really there anymore. Um, I know you're kind of stuck in a position when you're a kid, but when you're an adult, you're an adult. And the responsibilities and the pressures and everything sort of fall on you, but hopefully... Um, and even if you haven't perfected it yet, you're going to make mistakes no matter what age you are. You get to grow as an individual person and you get to kind of do whatever you want, usually when you're an adult. And that's where the fun begins. <laughs> that's where the fun begins. Um, and the difficulties, but that sweet, sweet reward if you get what you want done or even if you take a step in the right direction. Um, that's the beauty of adulthood. Um, there's some risks, there's plenty of rewards, there's nothing wrong with being playing it safe and then getting a little risky, and the notion of moving on, calling back to that, living paycheck to paycheck, like Sugar said, wanting to be something more than an idol, like he said in moving on, that's, your 20s is when you get to do that, you know, that's really when you get to do that, it's something to very much look forward to, and when you're 20 years old, when you're 20, uh, in America, when you're 21 years old, when you're 25 years old, 35, 45, 55, it doesn't matter. You're an adult. No one's going to treat a 55-year-old versus a 25-year-old any differently because they're both adults and they're both expected, even though it's a little unfair because the 45-year-old does have more wisdom, you would hope, than a, than a 25-year-old, you're still treated the same way. So the thing to look forward to when you're an adult, is not so much that you will have responsibilities that you have to do, but it's more so the new world that you are now allowed to explore with no real limitations other than the ones that hopefully you give yourself. I'm not telling you to jump into everything head first, but, um, and there will be difficulties, but you can look forward to freedom and experiences uh, that you couldn't have when you were younger. Obviously, I say, be careful. But when you're older, um, you can do whatever you put your mind to. That's really it. The no more dream is gone. Uh, you are now free to dream however you want. And similar to how Boys With Fun says... Those preconceived notions or something along the lines of the skit of the expectations, they're whatever you say. They're whatever you want. And that's a 
that's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. Uh, lots of weird tangents at the end of this album review, but this is, this is, I guess, what BTS does to you when you're thinking a little critically in regards to the album. Um, yeah. It's dope, one could say. <laughs> it's dope. Uh, but it will be difficult. But you, when you're younger, you're hopefully you're prepared. And I will say this. Even when you feel that you're not prepared, you're more prepared than you think. And it's okay not to know things. Because you don't know everything. You learn them. And hopefully you have a good group of people around you. I need you and stuff like that. Um, that will help you through it. So... Look forward to adulthood. Look forward to your dreams being accomplished. Slowly but surely, not all at once. Look forward to it. Don't afraid don't be afraid of moving on. Uh dream big and um fight for your dreams, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's and shoot for your happiness. That that's how I'm that's how I'm gonna end it. Shoot for your happiness. This album, best album yet. 10 out of 10. I, I actually think this really is. I really do think that this is their best album yet. Both song-wise, but thematically. Perfect album. Top tier songs. Best, al best album so far. Two of the best songs by them so far. Best album so far. Yes. Strive for the most beautiful moment in life. Happiness.